Hello everyone, welcome to this new video in the series. In this episode, we're going to have a look at how to use Horse and Imset Pro together with Game Creator 2. So here we are in our scene um, and I'm actually going to walk you through it um, because you know, most of this took a lot of figuring out on my part, a couple of custom scripts, unfortunately, um, and a um, revised prefab to make things easier. Now, I want to be absolutely clear, this prefab will only do anything if you actually have Force and MSAT Pro. If you don't have it from uh, Melbourne Animations, um, then this video is pointless. Um, so, this is a new revised um, version of um, the prefab so it has one additional script that I created um, which um, you will need to assign your player so the, the base player from game creator 2 um, you'll need to assign it here um, the horse itself is here and the offsets um, will depend on your character so for example me I'm following along with this series so this offset will work fine um, however you know if you didn't follow along then or have other characters then you might need to use a different offset I gave you the option just in case so we also need to add to our hero variable that we set up before we need to add a mounted bool so just set that up call it mounted just add click plus um, and you will add a new bool then um, we're going to unmount, um, turn those on. Now I added some game created two script uh, options here, so you can add your custom uh, instructions for this script on mount and uh, on dismount, so you can add more. Um, you know, add other things. Um, the script will automatically control Melbourne's input, so you don't actually have to do anything for that. It will automatically turn it on when mounted, turn it off when um, when we're dismounting. So that's all automated. Um, we also need to do a second uh, version, uh, a duplicate of our main shot. So literally duplicate it. Um, and then here, um, all I changed is clip true um, instead of avoid clipping um, because it was just annoying. Uh, however, if you want to change the values a bit, it might be better. Then when it comes to the game object, um, so here in game object, find game object to change the look. Um, drag in the horse and make sure to also do that with orbit quite important don't forget that uh, and of course adjust the settings more if you want I didn't actually do that um, but you might want to do that to make it a bit better um, and that's it then um, on here um, when we go to most of this is the same however I changed the right trigger um, I didn't set up left, etc. You can do that yourself. Um, I had to do quite a lot of custom scripting for this already. Um, so just set it up yourself because you'll need to tweak some of the stuff. So um, we have this one trigger here. Um, the other ones are, you know, they are already game creator. You just won't do anything. So if you want more points to climb the horse, um, you know, have fun. So here on the right, um, first things first, we're changing the camera shot to the new uh, horse one you're going to be adding. Um, we have angular speed that we're going to set to zero. This should all work just fine for you. Um, we're going to disable the collider of the player and we're going to enter a new state. So this new state, um, let me show you that in a bit. So here we have walk um, and you're just going to literally add the um, Horse and I'm set pro animations for this. So idle, walk, you know the gist. Um, just like with everything else, uh, make sure that root motion is turned off with Game Creator. Um, and that goes for all of those animations. So uh, let me bring it back up. So, well, just, you know, pause the screen, copy this over and <laughs> you're set. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's important that you set property speed to zero and can jump to off. Um, the same with uh, run. So duplicate this one once you're done and then set up run. Um, and there's only a couple you can change. So sprint left, right and sprint here. Um, everything else is actually the same because there's not that many sprinting animations for the actual rider itself. Cool. So um, we'll get into the whole running uh, piece in a bit. So um, in here, 
Um, so we changed our uh, state. So uh, change the state. Um, you can pick whatever layer you want. Just make sure it's always lower than the right uh, sprinting one. So that's why I did two. Uh, no transition. And then we're going to use the new enhanced gesture. So that's a new instruction I've added. Um, just type in gesture and you'll find it. Enhanced character gesture. Um, now this gesture um, is actually um, uh, quite a bit different. So um, it actually uh, contains, um, uh, you know, tweening between points. And that's because uh, HEP does that as well for their mounting. So they actually tween between points to um, you know play move the player while the gesture plays um, so we had to do the same because otherwise it just looked weird um, I don't think I've even optimized it that well so move the points a bit along you know as, as much as you want um, and yeah so um, basically we've got a starting point um, which is here um, and then we've got a middle point uh, which is this one and we've got a endpoint, which is this one. And basically what you do is while the play, uh, gesture is playing, it's going to be moving along these points. Um, default game creator to gesture couldn't do that. So I had to make a custom one um, that will do this. Um, it's actually really cool for a lot of things. Uh, this whole tweening stuff, it's pretty awesome. You can use it for multiple things. Um, no waiting here, because we're going to do a wait here that is just a tiny bit shorter. Um, and that way um, we can invoke the method of actually mounting. That will take away the flickering uh, little moment uh, between animations and states. So it's uh, that's why we're doing it like this. And then we have the invoke method, which is calling our custom new script um, that we're mounting. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we have a, um, a collider here that is set up. So once um, the mounted bool, so look that up, the mounted bool that we just added, uh, once the mounted bool is uh, changed, then um, this is going to be set active. So we're setting this to uh, active. Um, and then uh, on this trigger is going to be activated, um, which when we press F, by the way, that is the input F. I forgot about this. forgot to say that. Um, once we press F, um, it will execute these actions. And it's basically just the opposite of what we did before. Um, so we're changing the camera shot again. Um, we're invoking the dismount. Um, we're stopping the state. Um, we're playing a the opposite gesture of dismounting. Um, again, we're doing the same waiting trick. Um, then we're setting the trigger uh, inactive, enabling the collider and setting the angular speed back to the way it was supposed to be. Um, and that's it. Now, if you don't change the angular speed, um, by the way, and just, just to inform you, that's actually this one. Um, it, I know it has a different name, <laughs> so it took a while to actually find it. Um, but if you don't do that, it will still be rotating along on the horse, which is just really annoying because we didn't make the player static. So the player doesn't have any speed while on the horse. Um, it's completely um, parented to the horse and it can't do the, the whole rotation, but it's still playable. And the reason I did that is because um, later on when we're going to set up melee and um, you know if the shooter module will be active for bow and arrow um, we can actually still do those things without uh, without any issue because the player is still an active entity um, we're just it's just not literally moving on its own um, when it's on the horse and it's parented so let me show you what this looks like in uh, in action Cool, there we go. So um, we approach the horse, and yes, you can add a canvas to this. Um, it will mount, and you know, we're running around. I mean, it's doing everything it's supposed to. And the nice thing here is we're actually using um, Horse NMZ Pro's uh, controller for the horse, 
which is just such a great controller um, which is why I didn't want to find a custom solution um, because it's just such a good one um, it honestly is and yeah I wanted to keep that um, it's just really cool and as you can see when looking at the player um, the player is still animating he's still moving because he actually well the head is still moving and the arms and stuff um, because he's still a playable entity so he's not static so yeah pretty pretty cool stuff um, so yeah this required quite a bit of a uh, custom setup so dismounting as well and I I realized the points could be a bit better you can um, you know the uh, easing points or tweening points I set up uh, and that's the fun you can have with the um, you know with the custom uh, action I create a gesture um, you can move those along and, and you know make it fit uh, the way you want it um, but at least it's working and we've got uh, tweening or lurping whatever you want to call it uh, between points for uh, for mounting which is really really cool so yeah quite uh, quite happy with this uh, and there we go now when it comes to running um, I did change that on the player as well so I just want to show you so this is the original um, which was doing this um, this is the new one um, so letting go of shift is still exactly the same that doesn't change by the way quite important um, the only thing we did is remove um, everything here added some new uh, run conditions and then we're running the conditions and the conditions are basically still doing the same but it's just checking um, if mounted is false then we're still doing our default uh, locomotion state so everything else is still the same as it was before so it's just checking um, you know okay we're doing the normal run if mounted is true then we're doing the run once make sure they're both on layer 10 um, and that's it so we're actually on the rider you just don't really notice it that much um, but we're actually you know doing the wrong thing but yeah you just don't really notice it um, so yeah pretty cool um, and yeah that's pretty much it um, not much else to this um, it's a uh, you know it's a it's a quite custom approach um, but just without any custom scripting I couldn't get this done so I needed some custom scripting, but using complete um, Horse Anim Set Pro scripting on the player um, be became quite messy because then you had to modify the animator completely with new animation layers. Um, honestly, it was just too much, way too much. Uh, so we're not doing any of that. So there's nothing on the hero, as you can see. So no custom Melbourne scripting on the hero. Um, just wanted to find a way where we really were still using Game Created, uh, Game Created 2's uh, you know character controller combined with horse and set pro um, without losing any functionality on either so yeah sorry for this type of video and not literally just tearing it apart and building it up again um, but you know this was quite a bit of a, a setup to do and it's just easier to provide you with the prefab and um, that honestly isn't that different I just ripped out all of the stuff we didn't really need because uh, there was a bunch of stuff we just didn't need um, and for the other colliders you'll have to set up uh, set that up yourself um, and you'll definitely need to you know experiment with this the whole um, you know lurping points uh, for the uh, um, for the new gesture uh, instruction so yeah quite a bit of uh, quite of a bit of a hassle to set this up originally um, but I try to make it as easy as possible for you um, and um yeah you know it's uh it's just a bit of a, a bit of custom uh, custom scripting to make this work so that's it for this video um the uh zip will be in the or the package will be in the description of course so just download that and walk through those steps um and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next one